In the last lecture, we learned what is an observable and how to create an observable. So we learned that an observable is used to handle asynchronous data, right? And we also learned that an observable emits some data. Now an observable can also emit errors. And an observable also emits a signal which tells that the observable has done emitting all the data. So in this lecture, you're going to learn how to handle an error emitted by the observable and also how to execute some logic when an observable emits the completion signal. So let's go to VS code. So this is the observable which we created in our last lecture and this observable is emitting these five values. Now we learned that an observable can also emit an error. And to emit an error from an observable, we can use error method. Okay, so let me copy this line of code from here and let's paste it here. And here, instead of calling this next method on this observer, let's call this error method. So this error method returns an error. It emits an error from the observable. Okay, now which error do we want to emit? Here, let's create a new error object. And let's also specify the error message. So let's say something went wrong. Please try again later. Okay. So here what will happen is this observable will start emitting the data. So first it will emit this value one, then it will emit this value two, then it will emit this value three, and then it will emit this error. And when this error will be emitted, after that we have these two values four and five. These two values will not get emitted by this observable. And this is a very important point. Whenever an observable emits an error, after that, if we have any value to be emitted, those values will not get emitted. Let's see that in action. So let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here you will notice one is emitted, two is emitted, three is emitted. And after that, we have this error. And once we have that error, after that, we don't see the value four and five. Okay. All right. Now, when this error message is logged here, this error message will not make any sense to the end user. So as a developer, it's our job to handle this error. And to handle this error, what we can do is, in the last lecture, we learned that to this subscribe method, we can pass three callback functions. The first callback function gets executed every time an observable returns a new value. And the second callback function gets executed when an observable returns an error, it emits an error. So here, let's specify a second callback function for this subscribe method. For that, let's use this arrow function syntax. And this callback function is going to receive the error object. So let's specify a parameter, let's call it error. And this error parameter will be assigned with the error which this observable will return. In this example, this error parameter will get assigned with this error object. Okay. And inside this callback function, we can write the logic to handle the error. So let's say when this observable returns an error, when it emits an error, we simply want to display an alert window with the error message. For that, we can use this error object and this error object has this message property. Okay. So this is how we want to handle this error. Let's save the changes. Let's go back to the web page. So one is emitted, two is emitted, three is emitted. And after that, you can see we have this alert window with this error message. If I click on OK, you won't see any error message in the developer console. So in this way, we are handling the error returned by an observable. We are specifying a second callback function. And inside that second callback function of the subscribe method, we are writing the logic to handle the error returned by the observable. And it is as simple as that. All right. Now I also mentioned that when the observable is done emitting all the data, it can also emit a complete signal. Okay. So let me comment this line of code here. And let's say when this observable has emitted all these five data, we also want to emit a complete signal from this observable. So let me copy this line of code again and let's paste it here. And to emit a complete signal from an observable, we use the complete method. 
and this complete method does not take any parameter any argument okay and let's say we want to call this complete method after six seconds so after this time interval this complete method will be called and it will emit a complete signal from this observable and when this complete signal is emitted by this observable let's say we want to execute some logic for that we can specify a third callback function for this subscribe method okay and this callback function does not receive any argument and inside this callback function we can write any logic which we want to execute after the observable has returned a complete signal so here again let's use this alert function and let's say observable has completed emitting all values okay let's save the changes let's go to the web page so one is emitted two is emitted three is emitted four is emitted five is emitted and after that you will see that the observable has emitted the complete signal and once that signal has been emitted the third callback function here this has been called and it is displaying this alert window with the message observable has completed emitting all the values okay so in this way if you want to execute any logic after the observable has emitted the complete signal you can do that in the third callback function of this subscribe method now there is one more thing which you need to remember and that is once the complete signal is emitted from the observable after that if we have any data to be emitted that will not get emitted okay so for example if i change this time interval to let's say three seconds so this complete signal will be emitted after three seconds right so any value which we are emitting after three seconds for example this value four and this value five they will not get emitted okay let me save the changes and let's see that practically so you will notice one is emitted two is emitted three is emitted and then the complete signal has been emitted from the observable and if I click on this OK, you will not see the value 4 and 5 emitted. That's because once the complete signal is emitted from the observable, after that, no value will be emitted by that observable. Okay. Now, let's see one more thing. So, let me uncomment this. And now, you might think that once the observable returns an error, after that, it will also return a complete signal. Right. Let's see if that's the case. Let's save the changes. Let's go back to the web page. So one is emitted, two is emitted, three is emitted. And then after we have this uh, alert window with the error message, let's click on OK. Now we are not seeing the second alert window with the complete message, with this message. That's because even though the observable has returned an error, it is not going to send the complete signal it is not going to emit the complete signal okay so remember this point that once an observable returns an error after that it is not going to emit any other value or the complete signal all right so let's summarize what we have learned so far in the observable when we create an observable we use the next method to emit some value okay so here we are em emitting this value one using this next method here we are emitting this value 2 using this next method and so on. Then we can emit an error from an observable using the error method. And we can emit a complete signal from the observable using this complete method. And to handle the values returned by the next method, we specify the first callback function, which gets executed every time this next method is called. And it returns a value from the observable. Then the second callback function of the subscribe method gets called whenever the observable returns an error. And the third callback function of the subscribe method gets called whenever the complete signal is emitted from the observable. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.